Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm back again with the 1GX1, which is a mini laptop with a 7-inch touchscreen display, a design that's clearly inspired by gaming laptops, but also has a port for 4G LTE or 5G, depending on the configuration you buy. Uh, now, I've already got a video that sort of goes over the specs and features and general purpose usage when running Windows, but I wanted to show you that it actually does a pretty decent job running Ubuntu Linux as well, and should be able to handle other operating systems. Uh, there are some caveats, but I wanted to show you that most of the hardware is supported right out of the box. So I went ahead and actually installed Ubuntu here after I had a pretty good experience running it from a flash drive. The reason I've got a drive plugged in in the back there is just so I can use a mouse for this, uh, this video. But I want to show you a couple of things. First of all, you might notice that the keyboard, the, uh, the backlighting is working. I can change the lighting effects. colors, and so on. So that seems to be happening at sort of the pre-operating system level. And if you want, you can also uh, turn off the lighting and turn off that light on the rear. So all of those things are working pretty much the way you would expect them to. You can also use keyboard shortcuts to adjust screen brightness, volume, and uh, so on. So uh, hardware buttons supported out of the box with Ubuntu. Also, and this might be one of the most important things that I've discovered here, let me see if I can uh, make sure that this shows up on the screen, is uh, not only is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth supported, but so is 4G LTE. So the modem that is in here is detected by Ubuntu out of the box, no problems. I was quickly and easily able to set it up and connect to uh, my Project Fi data only SIM. And just to show you that that's working, I will turn off Wi-Fi so now we're on cellular data only. Open up a web browser and visit Lilliputing. Touchscreen's also working, you can see here. Now, just so I don't burn through my data cap, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to Wi-Fi. And turn off. There we go. I did check hardware accelerated video seems to be working. And among other things, that means that you should be able to watch even though we've only got a 1920 by 1200 pixel display here, I can go beyond 1080p all the way up to 4K video here. And we've got a little bit of buffering, but when it's playing, it's playing back smoothly. So that seems to be probably more of a data connection than a video playback issue. Let's see if we can get a scene that's a little higher motion. Pause to catch up. All right, well, the perils of doing this in real time, but basically 4K video streaming seems to work uh, reasonably well. Gaming is a little bit tricky, and I'll show you a uh, couple of things. So you might have noticed that when I did a Windows video, I tried a couple of different games here, and I'm going to show you one of those that runs pretty well here. So this is a more casual game. This is Night in the Woods. I'm just going to try and adjust the screen brightness here. So again, we're running Ubuntu Linux. This is the same game that I ran in Windows. And while we're wondering what's happening, here we go. While we're waiting for the game to load, I'll uh, repeat some of the specs here, which is that we've got a um, Core i5 102 uh Y processor, which is a quad-core 7-watt chip with Intel UHD graphics. This particular configuration has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, but entry-level models have 8 gigs and 256.
Anyways, so that's a sort of more casual style game. You might hear the fan sort of kicking in a little bit as we're under a little bit of load here. And I should also point out, if you look at the little indicator here, we're in sort of standard normal power mode. I can switch so the fan gets a little bit quieter and the CPU is going to run a little bit less powerfully. Or I can switch back and I can switch all the way up into high performance mode where the fan kicks into overgear. So all of those functions are working just fine. Now I'm going to show you the biggest problem that you're most likely to run into, at least out of the box without doing some extra configuration, is certain games don't run as well, even though we've got hardware accelerated graphics. And, oh, this is actually a pleasant surprise. Last time I tried running this game, it was flipped sideways. So uh, the screen orientation was incorrect. So I thought that was what was gonna happen here, but it didn't, which is great. So it can be a little hit or miss, I guess. Uh, but we're gonna continue this game, which I really have just begun. And I know it's hard to see, but in the upper left corner here, it says 22, 24, 25 frames per second. So if I just sort of start walking through this 3D environment, I'm gonna brighten the screen some so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, looks like we're in the sort of 21, 22 frames per second. So this same game was running at about 60 frames per second when I was using Windows. So even though there is support for hardware accelerated graphics on Ubuntu, uh, there are certain things that it does not seem that the Linux driver is as good as the Windows driver for. Now that's the default. I haven't done any real changes to uh, the setup here. So it's just sort of a stock Windows experience or a stock uh, Ubuntu experience. Uh, at 20 frames per second, I'd say it's playable, but other games that might be a little bit more demanding, because this is a game called Amnesia The Dark Descent, it's a little bit older, um, it's not super graphically intensive, so games that really require more graphics horsepower are probably going to be a little bit tougher to play here. So anyways, I just wanted to show you a little bit of that, and then I will show you the one other thing to keep in mind with this device, which is, as I mentioned, it's a 7-inch 1920 by 1200 pixel display, which is pretty high resolution for something this small. Oh, here we go. Now the screen is sideways after I exited it. So um, sometimes the game actually wants to play in sideways. This time when I exited the game, it switched the screen sideways. So I can get it back to portrait orientation by typing X render O right and that'll flip the screen. But while experimenting for a little while, I figured out a way to run that command every time the computer boots. And then after rebooting about three or four times, it stopped working and I hadn't found out the right way to fix it. So you might have to spend a little bit of time um, messing around with the XRander settings or some other settings in order to make sure that the screen orientation is correct. Uh, I should also point out that out of the box, this is roughly the way that the screen looks in terms of the amount of content that you can see on the screen at once. But if we go into the display settings, I do have the option of changing scaling to 100% scaling. And what that looks like is this. So now, adjust the screen brightness. Now, everything is really, really tiny on the screen and hard to see because everything is sort of one pixel to one pixel. Uh, I can switch to 150. And that makes things a lot more usable. Or I can switch all the way up to 175 here. And that makes everything a little bit easier to see, but it means you're gonna fit less on the screen. So you can sort of toggle back and forth between those choices to figure out what's gonna meet your needs best. Um, but overall, you know, I think it's uh, pretty impressive just how well it works with Ubuntu Linux out of the box. Um, and you can set it up to dual boot. So if I go ahead and log off here, I can reboot into Windows or Ubuntu. I can choose the operating system at launch. Now, what you'll notice is when the 
uh, grub bootloader does come up here though, it will be sideways. And that's because for whatever reason, the screen orientation is set to think that it's sideways. Uh, I didn't show you this. Uh, I don't think I showed you this in the other video either, but if you actually turn the screen sideways, uh, when you've got an operating system up and running, it will automatically detect the rotation. So there's a, some sort of gyro sensor in here. There we go, back to Windows. Um, that lets you flip the screen and rotate it. But you need the, uh, the software fully up and running for that to happen. So we should see that here once we get Windows. So even though this is not a device that you're really supposed to hold like a tablet, for some reason it seems to have that sensor. And I suppose with certain games that maybe require sort of going back and forth, that could be something that comes in handy. I don't know. But uh, just to show you, there we go. We've got a dual boot system, runs Windows, runs Linux. And uh, while I think there are certain things that definitely run better under Windows, it's nice to know that you can make a dual boot system or you can replace the operating system altogether if you would rather do that. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to run a battery test under Linux, but I did run a battery test when using Windows, uh, just a preliminary battery test where what I did was, um, Uh, what I did was run a streaming video from YouTube for as long as I could before the battery ran out, and it ran for about 9 hours and 20 minutes at sort of the medium power settings, the normal power settings, and um, with the screen brightness set to around 50%. So if all you're doing is light duty tasks like watching videos, you can actually get more than 9 hours of battery life. For gaming, I would expect substantially less. For mixed use usage, uh, I'm going to guess around 5 or 6 hours, but it's going to vary depending on what it is that you're doing. So anyways, I just wanted to show you here again that um, when I booted into Windows, or into Ubuntu, it turned the screen sideways again. And again, in order to undo that, I can just go into the terminal, or I can actually fire up a... Whoop, app like Arander, which sort of provides a quicker way to do this using a graphical user interface if you're not as comfortable typing in commands manually. So there you go. That's Ubuntu 20.04 LTS running on the 1GX1, available for pre-order now for $840 and up for a Wi-Fi model with 8 gigs and 256 gigs of memory and storage, respectively. Also available optionally with 4G LTE, which does work. The keyboard shortcuts work. The backlit keyboard works. Uh, everything works. Uh, the graphics are just a little bit less impressive, and I have not had a chance to test battery life, but I did want to share with you what uh, the general experience is when running Ubuntu. So uh, let me know if you have comments or questions in the comments, or you can head over to lilliputing.com for more details about the 1GX1 from One Netbook.